I would say, submit to you that those two considerations, getting our economic house in order so that we've got a fiscally responsible nation to lead, um, and uh, how we deal with the rest of the world are critically important. I was delighted to see that John McCain made a speech the other day, uh, to some extent breaking with the current administration, saying, look, we've really got to look to our international allies for more guidance. And the days when we could afford to go it alone are essentially over. We've got to reach out and do that. As a Democrat, what I want to have happen is I want somebody to win. At that point, I think I want somebody to win more than I care who wins, because the longer it goes, the longer it goes, the more the Democratic Party is, has, a, has a chance, at least, of being torn apart and leaving people who won't vote. Somebody who's angry because Senator Obama didn't get it, or somebody who's angry who Senator Clinton didn't get it. In dealing with our recession economy, why aren't the candidates focusing on the $12 billion a month cost of the Iraq war as a major contributor to our current domestic economic problems? In blaming the high cost of uh, oil on these problems, we and they are ignoring the fact that it is the war on terrorism that is driving up the cost of oil. I have shared very, very directly my frustration on the part of all of them uh, in regards to not substantively, at this stage, enunciating their positions in such a way that we as the uh, public can make uh, much more informed decisions. The fact of the matter is they have not clearly stated their positions at all. And as the ambassador says, it's about high time that they did. Every presidential uh, campaign year, it is a very important measure on Cuba, which give an idea of what is really uh, the main driving factor behind U.S. wars. If we start talking about all these sweeping reform changes right now and don't actually address the problem at hand, which is, um, you know, uh, again, the mortgage crisis, the tightening credit markets, then, um, you know, we're going to be off task and, and really uh, missing the mark. Many people who are in Mexico and are poor uh, or in other parts of Latin America have no way of applying for legal entry in the United States. Uh, even professionals from India have to compete for a limited number of visas. So it's a very competitive process. And for some people, there's simply no way to come to the United States uh, unless they basically break the law. For the past 20 years, or even longer, we simply have not seen any kind of enforcement. And by enforcement, we mean not only deportations, but also a crackdown on employers hiring in undocumented individuals, and also on fraud, petitions that are filed fraudulently to get some kind of immigration benefit. I always say that young people historically don't suffer from lack of interest, but they suffer from lack of access. Facebook, MySpace, YouTube, email, IM, cell phone, blogging, all of that um, has changed that. You know, it's been called the YouTube election, it's been called the first tech president, and it's all being pumped and, and um, fueled by young people.